Hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, my name is Tambio Benson. I'm a staff writer for IndieWire. Uh, thank you for joining us for this fantastic event. Uh, we have a great uh, panel for everyone uh, here at South by Southwest. Uh, today, we're focusing on the authenticity of storytelling and um, who better to guide us through this topic than the creative masterminds behind own the Oprah Winfrey Network's newest drama series, Delilah. Uh, we will hear from the creator, executive producer, the director, the writers, the head of makeup, and the talented actress Mara Hill, who brings Delilah to life. Uh, before we begin, let's uh, let's take a look at Delilah. Everything grows. Sometimes together, sometimes apart. Maybe you'll be my savior. Wanna tell me what's going on? Got myself into trouble. I need your help. This time we've made it 20 years without going up against each other in court see through all your let's not do it now you're watching me promise you won't take her case d please for both of us let it go. <laughs> get it, get it, get it, get it. Let me introduce you to these uh, incredible talents uh, behind and in front of the camera um, uh, who uh, bring the show to life. Craig Wrights is the creator of Delilah, uh, as well as the award-winning hit drama Greenleaf, which was the number one watched show among African-Americans in 2020. His other credits include the highly rated drama Six Feet Under on HBO, Lost, Brothers and Sisters on ABC, and uh, the United States of Tyra on Showtime. He went on to create Dirty Sexy Money for ABC and Unemployed for MTV, as well as executive produce uh, Tyrant on FX and Rush on USA. Charles Randolph Wrights is a critically acclaimed award-winning producer, writer, and director for television, film, and theater, and is an executive producer and director for Delilah. His television credits include Greenleaf, Katie Keene, Step Up, High Water, Lincoln Heights, South of Nowhere, and Live at Lincoln Center. His film credits include directing the ABFF winner, ABFF being the American Black Film Festival uh, winner, uh, Preaching to the Choir, and he recently executive produced the Doc NYC Grand Jury Prize winner, Maurice Hines, Bring Them Back. Cheryl Donia is one of the directors on Delilah and is a renowned African-American director, writer, and actress. She is no stranger to own, as she has directed two episodes of Ava DuVernay's critically acclaimed series, Queen Sugar, and served as a producing director for its fourth season, as well as episodes of Love Is and David, David McSman, which are, of course, all air and own. Uh, other directing credits include Claws for TNT, The Fosters for Freeform, The Chai for Showtime, Star for Fox, Dear White People for Netflix, and most recently Lovecraft Country for HBO and All Rise for CBS. As the title character of Delilah, Mara Hill embodies the same fierce determination and devotion to family as that of the powerful lawyer she portrays. Uh, she has appeared on numerous TV series, including The L Word, Blackish, How to Get Away with Murder, Life in Pieces, Speechless, and Jane the Virgin. Carol Rashid is the head of the makeup department for Delilah and has also worked as the head of makeup for two other own series, uh, Greenleaf and David McSman. She has built an impressive career in, in entertainment, which includes working on films such as The Immortal Life of Henry Lax, The Hunger Games Catching Fire, Barely Lethal, and Crazy Sexy Cool, the TLC story. Ivy Pross is a writer and producer on Delilah. She, she, like her fellow panelists, is part of the own family and served as a writer and story editor on the NWCP award-winning drama Greenleaf. The Idaho-born writer went to Dartmouth College for undergrad and then moved out west to attend grad school at USC School of Cinematic Arts, where she got her MFA in writing for screen and television. She was also part of the Universal Writers Fellowship. Devon Renee is a staff writer and scripts coordinator for Delilah. She got her start in entertainment, through the prestigious TV Academy internship program, and from there went on to become the showrunner's assistant on Owen's drama series, Queen Sugar, and the CW Star Girl, and a writer's assistant on Freeform's young adult drama series, Famous in Love. Devon also presides as the board chair president of Black employees at Warner Brothers. Thank you all for uh, joining us. Um, I'm delighted to meet you all and uh, for the opportunity to speak with you as well. 
uh, during this festival. Let's start with Craig. Uh, you write these uh, profound stories about inspiring Black women who can take on the world, essentially. For instance, in Greenleaf, Grace Greenleaf, played by Meryl Dandridge, uh, felt the need to protect and heal her family. Uh, her, uh, Lady May Lynn Whitfield was the matriarch of her family and became a true leader at Calvary. Now we have this series where women are the focal point once again. Can you introduce us to Delilah and tell us where the inspiration came from? Um, the inspiration for Delilah <clears throat> came from my experience over the course of writing and producing Greenlee for five years. I met so many amazing black women. Um, behind the camera, in the production process, but also among the fans uh, and, and in uh, journal the journalists who covered the show, just so many, hundreds, probably thousands of black women that I met over the course of that, um, that adventure. And one theme that I noticed or that, that I perceived in, in a lot of their lives was that in many cases, these women were uh, the, the, the focal point or the linchpin of, of, of the many milieus in which their lives operated. They were holding their family together for their kids. They were holding their friend group together for their friends. They were holding their workplace together for their coworkers. They were holding the country together for the country. I mean, we just saw that happen um, in Georgia and, and how that expanded to affect really the fate of the entire nation. And so what I noticed was that nobody was seeing that picture complete. In other words, a kid might say, my mom puts us first, right? A friend might say, my friend puts me first. Uh, you know, a lover might say, my lover puts me first. But no one saw from above, so to speak, that she was putting all these other people first all the time. And really, I mean, without exaggerating or, or risking hyperbole, holding the world together. And I just thought, I want to make a show that gives back to the viewers on OWN and whoever else happens to follow us along to uh, Netflix or wherever this show goes on to have a life, um, to give back a message uh, to say, you are seen in your wholeness and all you are doing. And so I wanna make a show that included the workplace, that included friends, that included family, that included political issues in the background um, because, and I'm almost done talking, I have this theory that television costs the audience something to watch. It's a subtle cost, but it's there because it divides the world into the, the audience and the performer. It, it divides the audience between the filmed and the unfilmed. And so there is a, a submission that occurs in the viewer that maybe they don't even notice happens. So I think the only way to repay the audience for that whenever you can is to show them heroically as they are. Give them back a vision of themselves that repays them for the cost of watching so that it's an even trade, right? And so all that went into my thought process about Delilah. And then of course, what I did was what I did with Greenleaf the whole time, which is I went and asked all these black women, what should it be? What should we do? <laughs> and then I just listened and tried to take it all in and, and, and do my best to get it right. And then all my black female partners along the way were always spot checking things and saying, it's not like this, it's not like that. And every day I woke up just so honored and excited to be learning from everybody. Great. Yeah, it's good to see. Um, it's it's good to see Delilah does not exist in a, in a vacuum. I mean, she does, she has a her life is is depicted as. I mean, she has a. It's not just about the work. It's also she has a family and and so she's balancing these duties, which is, I think, uh, the case for many women, uh, not just black women, but women in general across the country. Uh, Charles, how did you come into Delilah, and and what drew you to the story? Well, I had worked with Craig on Greenleaf, and I knew Craig before that because we're both from the theater. And so anything that he writes interests me, but this, especially because these are women and men in this show who are my friends, who are my family. And I can't typically say that when I watch television. Um, now images are shifting and changing, but there are women like this in every city, in, in, in every small town in this country. And I loved 
that he was presenting another view because there are all different views. As many colors as we are, there is as many views. And I love being a part of something that celebrated that and took it to a different level and not this heightened level because that's what typically it is to take it to a level that feels real. And I guess, as we're saying in this, that feels authentic. Indeed, yes. I mean, there, there is there is a realism and an authenticity to it. Um, it's not like watching watching a documentary. Of course, it's still fiction. Um, but 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 you you, you get a sense uh, that uh, the people behind the project did their homework. So that's great. Uh, uh, Devon and Ivy, uh, how did you come to join the writers' room? Uh, what and, and and what was your role in developing the story? We'll go with uh, start with Devon first. Um, I came to join the Delilah's Writers Room as the script coordinator uh, in the back half of the season. So it's kind of thrust into the deep end with these lovely folks. Um, and we, Ivy and I became writing partners uh, later in the season for episode 106 and then later the finale episode 108. So Craig is, has been very generous in terms of um, just allowing me to, to allocate my ideas and what it is that I think as a black woman, um, how it is that I feel, especially as a baby writer coming in, um, feeling like I actually have a voice in a room um, and I'm able to help craft that storytelling because of my background and my perspective. And if I may jump in on that, it was so amazing to see her step into her own and become this writer because I ended up directing the two episodes that, that you did do that. And it was, it was thrilling to work with you that way. And we must afford more opportunities like that. So talents like Devin can happen. And that's what, that was thrilling about this. Well, I love you, Charles. <laughs> we love you. Ivy? I came to Delilah because I'd worked with Craig on Greenleaf and um, we had a good working relationship. So he hired me again, which was very nice of him to do. And um, I was there from the beginning of the writer's room. And I think I used to work in a law firm before I was a writer. And so I got to add my experience with law to the legal story of the show. And I think that's one of the things I really got to contribute. And then as Devin said, she came in later and we just really clicked and I think, think very similarly about storytelling and like human psychology. And because of that, we sort of found a natural partnership writing together. And I think we got to make both of each other. We made both of us like better writers working together, which was really wonderful. And I'm so glad she joined the room. So. Good for you, good, good for you both. <laughs> I'm and they sorry. wrote great scripts. <laughs> was, was Devin saying something there? I missed it. I was just saying I love Ivy. Um, we really have found sort of a, a jam together as writers, which is great because she was so, she's so great at structure. She's so great at character development. And moreover, because of that legal background, she was able to sort of like pull me back and be like, but this has to make sense though. Um, so it was such a joy to work with her. Yeah, I was the annoying person in the room who'd be like, well, it would actually be like this. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you brought you brought your expertise uh, to the room, and, and it was uh, necessary, um, I guess I would say. Uh, a question for Cheryl: You directed episode one hundred and one of the series. Uh, can you tell us about your experience uh, directing the series and, and how you brought these characters to life, uh, sort of through your own specific lens? Wow, that's a great question. Thank you, um, and thanks to everybody, all my other panelists, and to own. Um, you know, I think there's. Um, you know, a relationship that I have with OWN and the network and the storytelling that um, Oprah has, you know, put forth in all her shows and, and you know, all her showrunners, you know, of authenticity, of, of Blacknesses, plural. Um, so I really wanted to explore that in, you know, the pilot, um, you know, not casting, you know, everybody who was, you know, you're kind of standard or given, but try to find real authentic people. So um, a lot of my cast, uh, you know, the people that we selected and, and collectively um, were people who had never performed before. Um, most of the family were new performers, young, you know, all of, all, basically all of Delilah's kids were, you know, slight discoveries really. Um, and, you know, that's not an easy task for a pilot director because you're, you know, doing lots of other things with, with, with the cinematographer and, you know, the look and, you know, 
pulling together a crew, et cetera, et cetera, working with, you know, Charles and Craig. So, you know, I had a lot of, you know, uh, I, I say plates in the air, um, but, you know, really push forth to kind of create this authenticity. So it felt real, you know, my whole thing was realness. And so that's really what I, uh, you know, dug into um, in creating this, this pilot, creating, you know, the blackness, the, the power of blackness, the power of womanhood and the character of Charlotte. Um, and it's a city I'd never been in, uh, you know, I'd spent a long time in. And so I was really, you know, fortunate to have um, Charles there, who, you know, was basically the mayor of Charlotte, you know, <laughs> just knew so many intricacies and details and, you know, all the nuances and, you know, just kind of, I, I would say collaboration, you know, collaboration with him, collaboration with the city and collaboration with the crew. And then more importantly, collaboration with the cast and, and reading their messages around, you know, what they were, where they came from and where they wanted to go. So um, there was a lot of trust in that. Um, so I think I brought that level of uh, of trust to them, to all the you know, the, the four leads, to, you know, the discovery of the you know the, the, the male leads and and the family. So it, it just became a warm bubble um, that we you know kind of created in, in 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 during very difficult times in the sense of the pandemic, as well as uh, an election. Uh, curious, you mentioned uh, that you that 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 much of the especially the younger cast uh, were first timers, first time actors. Um, I, I, I've always found that working with kids is probably one of the toughest things uh, that a director could, could possibly have to handle, especially first timers. So I'm, I'm, I, I'll just just briefly what what uh, how you're able to sort of um, obviously they're, they're talented themselves and I'm, I'm, I'm sure they're professional, but but how, how do you sort of corral these sub uh, these 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 uh, these these sub tenure, young beings, young spirits, young beings. <laughs> yes. very talented young uh, spirits. I mean, yes. I mean, I I think you know. Um, we want to, you know, there's music in the show, right? There's a character who really is, 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 is Delilah's daughter and she's, you know, a really talented musician, a violinist. And, you know, it's so, how many shows have you seen where you cut, you know, your far away shot of somebody playing the violin and you go close up to them and you, know, you see their face and a little bit of the violin. And, and, you know, definitely Charles and I was listening to him and, and trying to listen to the sound of the show, what's on the page that Charles, uh, and Craig wrote um, that Craig said, you know, this, this, you know, this piece of music is played and it carries through her morning and her routine. And, you know, I don't know if that's where it's going to lay in the final edits when we air it, but definitely, you know, there was like an authentic, you know, music. So uh, Charles, I mean, I must say, like, if it wasn't for Charles and working with our wonderful casting directors, um, we would not have like really like, found a real artist, you know, somebody who had real raw talent. And, uh, you know, I, I just, I, 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 Kelly was an amazing discovery, Charles. And I must say, thank you for the, you know, pushing that envelope. Cause we were ready to like, okay, we can't find a real, you know, violinist. And, and he was like, give me one more chance. I know this town, I know somebody exists. Give her a chance, give her a chance. And so we really went for that. So we got a real violinist and now she's a, like a find. Um, as well as uh, Dion, um, uh, uh, Delilah's uh, nephew, as I would say it, you know, little, little, couldn't read. So there was that challenge of having a young actor who has, you know, talent, but couldn't read. And so, you know, figuring out ways to, to, to bring the script to life with him and have him trust me and, and, and you know, be able to perform and create his performances. And then with um, Braylon as uh, Marcus, uh, Delilah's son, he was just, you know, suave. And so it was just like figuring out how to let his um, modesty blaze. Um, he had raw talent. He, you know, he was, he's, he's going to shine. And, you know, it was, it, it, it was a perfect pairing and, and skin color, spirit color, um, you know, Delala had, had, you know, and, and Mara was able to kind of navigate this family and, and, and it, it feels authentic. Great. I'm, I'm glad I asked that question actually. <laughs> I'm always curious what it's like to work with kids, um, and and especially in this case, one who was not at an age where he could read. So that that's actually uh, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, speaking of Charles, since uh, you talked about him so much, uh, this one is for you, sir. Um, you wore several hats, uh, several hats on Delilah. How did you? How were you able to juggle being an EP and a director as well? And what can you share about about that experience? In any situation, that is difficult. But when you add COVID on top of that. 
it, it, it was the most challenging thing I've ever done. I mean, having to, to wear all the hats, but you're wearing the hats in different zones and <laughs> different areas. And you, it, it, it was, it helped being from Charlotte because I really had help from the community. But the main thing is that I had people around me who, who believed in this show. The actors were tremendous and they brought everything to them. I mean, Mara became Delilah. She was, she was Delilah of our company. I mean, she really was number one on the call sheet and did that work. And um, that was, that helped also the crew they were in a time that was really difficult. They worked so, so diligently to try and bring this show to fruition because, you know, you heard about different shows and issues and obviously everything kept changing with the, with the not just the pandemic, but as Cheryl said, the political situation. I, I remember Cheryl too specifically going, do we need guards? What, what's going to happen when things are happening, when we're voting? I mean, it was a very difficult time. And I think the thing that kept me going was what this panel is about. How do we remain authentic? How do we remain organic? And I will do everything I can do to do that. If it means trying to find a location, if it means calling my cousin and stealing artwork out of their house, if it means whatever that is, that's what I will do. I mean, and that's what we did. That's what Cheryl did. All of us working on it on, on the ground had to figure out this is a different world. This is not the world we've known. So I had to stop everything that I thought I knew and regroup and take, this is where we are right now. We're in the middle of a health pandemic and a race pandemic. And we have to be aware of that and use that in our, in our storytelling. And when we finished, I was just so proud that we did it. And I was so honored that all these people um, encircled each other and it truly became a village and made it work. So uh, 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 forgive me, uh, maybe uh, I guess Charles and, and, and Craig could probably answer this question. You may have already answered it and maybe it's in the press notes, uh, but, but um, you, so it, you, you shot through the pandemic, correct? Yes. Okay, uh, when, when, when exactly did you, did you wrap? Oh my God, what day was it? <laughs> I don't even know. It's like, it's still in my, I'm editing, so when were we? Three weeks ago, two weeks ago, we just, oh, wow. it was okay. January 20, Second. 22nd, thank you. January 22nd. So this is, this is so new. Okay, got it, got it. Uh, well, well, kudos, kudos for, for, for uh, slush, slugging it through the, the pandemic uh, since, especially when so many other productions have been shut down, but that, that's great um, that you're able to get it done. Um, so let's go and to Mara. said that earlier, oh, it sorry. was the collaboration, that word is, is definite from the writers, where it begins, to us, through everything, you yeah. know, from Craig's vision, through all of this, it's the collaboration that made it happen. Because if, if we didn't, I mean, I, you know, we were up in the middle of the night, I'm, I'm talking to Ivy, talking to Devin, trying to figure out, we can't shoot in that because that room is too small and we can't put a camera in there. So how do we do this? And then they rewrite and then we're there. I mean, it was constant. I'd never worked like that before. And we all found the way to do it. Well, was there ever any point uh, when uh, Craig or Charles that you guys maybe thought uh, as executive producers that you thought that this would not uh, be finished or, or that it would not get done because of the pandemic? Or were you pretty sure that from the beginning we're going to see this through no matter what? I think I said to someone every single day, <laughs> this show will not happen. <laughs> we will not finish. It's <laughs> <over."> <laughs> Mara? I was wondering what your two, I was wondering Mara, what Ivy and Devin would say. I was just like, what? What? You were saying that daily? Uh, I was like, no. Every day. I will jump jump in on this. <laughs> yes, please, day. Ivy, please. We weren't, we weren't telling you, Mara, or you wouldn't have come in. <laughs> you would have given up. <laughs> there we is kept a little, it from you. The show is going to get shut down. It's not going to happen. COVID's, it's not going to get made. <laughs> it was every day. <laughs> <laughs> I kick back. I kick back. I was like, no, yes, yeah. I always believed in it. I felt like we were going to get through the, to the end and from the very beginning. So, um, just, more. Say more about that. What, I mean, what do you? Yeah, I, I just, I, you know, I don't know. It just felt special to me in the very first place. 
it felt purposeful. It felt like it had a place, um, you know, in the world and, and that the world needed it in some way. And so I felt like because it had those elements, it would see it, it would be seen through. You know, like we, we all came together and supported it and, and did the work and it was hard work. Um, but we, you know what I mean? But it had another, it had another thing that was, you know, anything that has, you know, there's balance in the world. We talk about that with the character, but there's balance always, you know what I mean? If you have something that has some light, it's gotta have something a little bit dark that might come up against it. You know what I mean? You gotta prove yourself in some way. But I felt like there was some, something about it that needed to come through and that it would make it from the very beginning. I was, I remember being in the first, like after the first scene, you know, seeing Craig and Charles sitting there and I was like, oh, you got, it's a hit. <laughs> you know, I just felt like, what are you, what? this is amazing. You know, like it just always felt special and it always felt like it would, you know, do well to me. You know, I can only hope that that, 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 that is a correct feeling, but it only, it only ever felt, I mean, of course it was hard, it was challenging, but it only ever felt as a show good, like, and, and deserved, you know, like, yeah, I want to I want to say say something if I can about uh, this notion of authenticity, which yeah. I'm sure everyone has a different idea in their head or several different ideas about the meaning of that word. Um, but I just want to be clear about one one part of authenticity, in my opinion. Like early on in my career, when I was just writing plays, people would always say like, "Your dialogue is so real," right? And I was, and my dialogue wasn't real at all, right? <laughs> So like I would sometimes think, what do they mean by that? And what I think they meant was your dialogue has an uninterrupted fabric of tone, just like real life has an uninterrupted fabric. Mm -hmm. right? So you can have a highly stylized style, a highly artificial style, but will feel real and authentic if it's uninterrupted and complete and contains enough multiplicity, right? Like real life does. My point here is that authenticity, in my opinion, certainly it's about collaboration. Certainly it's about getting as much raw, true information as you can into the machine. Certainly it's about listening to people when they say, that's not the artwork she would have on that wall. Certainly it's like she would not be listening to that song. It's all that stuff. But I think there's a deeper, simpler spine to what we call authenticity. And it has to do with what Mara was just talking about. And it's the stuff, it's the thing I maybe lost sight of every day when I would feel hopeless, <laughs> is that what's most authentic about Delilah, I believe as a show, is that it's really clear in every scene and frame of it, what it came to say. And what it came to say is so necessary and of the moment, right? That's the authenticity right there, that it's saying something about the value of the individual and, and specifically the value of the black female individual, really just the individual, that one person with integrity can make a difference. And I just feel this moment in our country and in the world really, that's something that people need to be saying. And so, because it's easy, especially with all the media, it's easy to feel helpless and hopeless. So when I, when you talk about the authenticity of the show, to me, that's the deepest measure of the show's authenticity is that it, it's saying something that needs to be said right now. And that covers a lot of sins, you know, that takes care of a lot of little, you can forgive a lot of little business if, if the show is saying something necessary. Right, right. And uh, I, I paid attention. I, I, I tuned into the um, uh, uh, CTAM, CTA, uh, TCA panel for the show right before this. And uh, um, what I heard briefly uh, that I liked, and I'm not asking to comment on this, but just, just an observation. Uh, it seems like you're going to be sort of taking on or tackling the mil military industrial complex somewhat in the uh, in season one. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, let me uh, let me ask Mara a question because I have not I have not spoken to Mara yet. Um, first of all. What made you say that this is a show that you just absolutely had to be in? Uh, um, well, okay, so actually in the, um, there's a, a, a few auditions that had to happen before I could get the role, but after the, um, the producer session with, uh, with Craig, I literally got out of that session and I was like, I love him. I just love the guy, I just love him. You know what I mean? Um, whatever happens here, 
Mm-hmm. I hope I hope I get it. You know, really, I do. But I love that guy. You know what I mean? And I felt like I would be honored to to work with him. He just felt like a special person in that producer session. And, and I know it's not like it, an experience that you have all the time. So um, besides that, it was, um, you know, Oprah being aligned with it. And then the character itself, you know, I'm, I'm relatively early in my career still, but um, I am very much uh, particular about the things that I will say about the black woman and the roles that I play. And so this hit all of the marks as far as what I would want to say. Um, you know, she's empowered. She's got a strong moral compass. She, she you know, she fights for the things that matter to her. Um, she's, uh, you know, fighting for the underdog people who don't have a voice. Um, you know, in the event that she does have one, she uses it. And in as much a way as possible, she cares about her children, you know, and motherhood means everything to her. She's, you know, battling a lot of things on a regular basis, just like every woman is. Um, but, you know, she, she, she just keeps getting up and keeps on fighting and, and, um, and does it with a sense of grace, not always ease at all. But um, I admire that, you know, and to be able to portray someone with that, with those qualities, you know, I count, an, I count that as an honor. This is this is your your first lead of four series, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> why, why 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 did you why did you say it like that? <laughs> oh yeah, I mean it's <laughs> I mean it's the first series regular role for that matter. So okay. Okay. yeah, but yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna say to me to me there's a, a silly little line that just goes right by in the opening of the of the first episode, but it really matters to me, and I, I feel like the proof is that it matters is that it's still in the cut even though it almost has no <laughs> value whatsoever in the story, which is she hears about an appointment with somebody that's coming in today. And it would be better if she would just cancel it or move it, right? And she goes, yeah, cancel it. And then like two seconds later, she goes, actually, no, keep it. She's arranged her day. <laughs> and to me, like that's Delilah right there. Yeah. Um, and, that's Mar- and that's she's Mara. She's thoughtful. Yes. She's thoughtful. She's aware of other people. You know, um, when when Trump got elected, uh, I, I immediately went out and got this tattoo, this one right here, which is an I Ching hexagram that means controlled power. It means use your power with an awareness of other people, like, right? And yeah. Yeah. for whatever reason, at that time, I, I felt that it, that was about me standing up against this model of white male nonsense that had just risen up like like a dragon out from under the collective unconscious of the nation. And so I, I got it right when we rolled out, I can't remember season two or three of Greenleaf and all the, the journalists would say like, what does that mean? And I would say that. And then I would say, what it really means is come and get me. Um, okay. I, but my point is Delilah does that. Delilah uses her power aware of other people. She uses it in, in the service of others. She uses, she balances things with other people. She, she allows everybody their dignity, you know? Super important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let, let, me, let me get Carol in on the conversation. Carol, um, in terms of the makeup for the series, can you talk about your process and how important your craft is to the authenticity of the characters uh, the actors play? Uh, because um, I think it's, it's work that uh, some in the audience don't really appreciate and don't pay as much attention to as they probably should. Or, or is the work that you do meant to be invisible? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, I, I really think that the work that makeup artists do and hairstylists do, um, you know, it's all about helping to develop the character. Now, in, de- in developing the character, depending on what the character is, of course, you don't really want to see the makeup many times, you know, specifically, you know, for a show like Delilah. You know, there she specifically is a... You know, everyday woman, even though she's powerful and she's working, um, but she's not going to be the person that's going to have the beat down look. You know what I mean? The perfect eyeshadow and the perfect lip and the perfect blush and the perfect hair. Everything is not supposed to be so perfect, but not distracting, you know? Um, so, it, you know, in terms of the characters, you kind of have to really look into who they are and what they represent. And of course, a lot of hats go into that, a lot of talking go into that in terms of the research that I do, the research that the actor has done also in terms of what they think that it should be. You know, you have your producers, 
uh, you know, coming in with, you know, what they think it should be. And then, of course, you have, you know, the own network. I've done a couple of different shows with them, so I kind of understand and have a feeling of how they like their ladies to look. Um, you know, so it's, it's really about enhancing what's there and helping to build on what the character is. Um, I don't know if that really explains it, but it, that's, that's kind of, you know, how I kind of go into the process. You know, I also research, like, for attorneys, you know, you have some attorneys, you know, they're built up, you know, like somebody like Tamara, her makeup, you know, needed to be kind of perfect. Uh, you know, she had a certain kind of look and a certain style to kind of go with everything else, her clothes, hair, makeup, it all is a collaboration. And we all kind of work together and work off of each other, if that makes sense. Um, so you kind of follow along what the storyline is and, and just mix it all in together to come up with, with a certain particular style you know, for a particular character. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that's all very informative. I, I, I think, um, I, think uh, I, I don't even like the term below the line talent. It just, it just it's, <laughs> um, it, it seems sort of uh, dismissive. Below the line, above the line. I mean, it, you know, it, it's a yeah. whole team working together to, uh, to, create, to create this thing. So um, I'm gonna wrap it up because uh, we are officially out of time. Um, there were other questions, but, but we have to move on, unfortunately. Um, but this was fun. Craig, Charles, Cheryl, Devon, Ivy, Carol, and Mara, I want to thank you all for being here and uh, sharing your insights. Um, I think we got enough of an inside look into the series without giving significant plot points away, as well as the work that has gone into bringing an authentic experience uh, to the screen. Uh, those watching this panel at South by Southwest should be enticed, I think, uh, to tune in weekly to uh, Delilah on Tuesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern Pacific on OWN or Coinfree Network. Um, I'm sure I'll be, I've, I've seen the first episode and I'm definitely coming back for second. So I'm sure I'll be watching uh, when it premieres. Uh, maybe before that, we'll see. Um, if you want to learn more about Delilah, go to oprah.com, oprah.com slash Delilah, D-E-L-I-L-A-H, oprah.com slash Delilah. Uh, and um, have a great day, everyone, and enjoy the rest of South by Southwest. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.